Hey, how's it going, guys? So this is a different type of Mass Effect, uh, Mass Effect video. Um, basically, I'm going to be ranking the characters from Mass Effect 1 and 2, both my crew members and just uh, several other members, including uh, antagonists, like the villains that I've encountered so far. And uh, the person who gave me this idea was... Here, let me uh, bring his name up. The person who actually gave me the idea of this uh, video, and he didn't give it to me intentionally. He just like commented on one of my videos, but then it gave me the idea to do something like this. Uh, just one moment. It's one of my members. So I may be saying his name wrong. If I do, I do apologize. Um, so shout out goes to CO, uh, I mean, not CO, SOC uh, Hobbit, who actually um, commented on my uh, Mass Effect 2 review and comparison with uh, Mass Effect 1. Uh, video he basically what he did was he put in the comments section saying uh, these are my top three favorite companions uh, in the entire trilogy and then I was thinking like huh wait there are like hmm I might do a character ranking video uh, that actually is a good idea so that's why I, I, where I got the idea so shout out to my uh, member for uh, giving me the idea for this video so anyways um, I'm gonna have to bring up the list because I did make a list of several uh, characters so that way I don't forget leaving some out I was going to do this um, about like two days ago, but the thing is that's when my throat was still acting up from that small cold. So uh, I didn't want to go like, <laughs> I just like keep on coughing and clearing my throat while uh, talking. Otherwise, it's going to be an unpleasant video. <laughs> but to be clear, these are characters from Mass Effect 1, Mass Effect 2, and including the villains. So anything that happened in Mass Effect 3, I'm not going to be covering. And to be clear, I'm somewhere on um, uh, episode 8 or 9. Because in uh, episode 9, uh, this is when I started uh, moving things and I moved to a, a different location in the apartment. So that's why the backgrounds look uh, very different. So I just want to be very clear about that. Um, now, let's start. Uh, let's work our way down the list. Number one, Caden and Linko. And I'm putting them to the side right here. So at least you guys can get a visual effect. So you guys aren't just like listening and uh, looking at me the whole time. Caden and Linko. Now, Caden, he was... Uh, the very first one on our squad, the very first mission, along with, um, I still remember his name, Jenkins, who was unfortunately gunned down within the first like one or two minutes of the mission. So Caden has been with us since the beginning, but um, he could have been actually with us uh, up until now, uh, because I, I don't know how far Caden uh, can come. Up until now, because uh, we're the ones that chose to save Ashley instead of Caden. So if we sacrifice Ashley and save Caden, so instead of Ashley, it would have been just Caden with us the entire time so far. That's if he would make it through Mass Effect 3. Hopefully, hopefully he will. <laughs> um, now, I'm just going to be rating the characters at like 1 through 10. So 1 being absolutely horrible, 10 being amazing, like perfect. I would give him actually a 9 out of 10. Now, the reason for that is because he had amazing abilities, amazing biotic abilities and tech abilities. And that were really useful when it comes to encryptions and um, things like that. It was very useful. So that's why uh, I gave him 9 attempt, but the reason I docked one point is because since I sacrificed him so early throughout the trilogy, I did not spend enough time with him. That's why. So my ratings are based on my opinion. So if you guys don't agree, uh, then please don't come at me for that. <laughs> These are just my opinions. Next, Ashley Williams. So far, Ashley has been my love interest and uh, she has been, so far, I know she received a lot of backlash because uh, she's kind of like Cerberus in a way. Uh, against like the aliens and just really focusing on the humans and I know she received a lot of backlash for that just kind of like the discrimination toward the alien races or species but so far besides that she has been a great character when it comes to combat my companionship and all that uh, she is a bit like tough and a head charger but hey we always we need at least one of those characters throughout the game so for her I would give a uh, 8.5 out of 10 actually because the reason for that is she's amazing, her character and all that. But uh, so far, I, I don't know her extent so far. And I can kind of give her points a little bit more because of the romance. <laughs> That's why. But either way, Ashley Williams is a great character. Next. Um, I don't know what rank to put. You know what? Captain slash counselor slash admiral. <laughs> David Anderson. Now, um, the voice actor for uh, Sergeant Foley from uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. This character has been with us since uh, the beginning, and so far he has been very supportive in every single uh, game. Mass Effect 1, Mass Effect 2, even so far in Mass Effect 3. 
He's been agreeing with us. He's been supporting us. He's been with us by our side. And uh, in my opinion, I wish he kind of stayed counselor because he probably would have done the best there. But I guess he pretty much got bored out and military was more of his uh, direction rather than politics. So he went from captain to counselor to admiral. So in my opinion, he went the highest he possibly could as a counselor, but then he dropped kind of like a demotion and went to admiral. But he's fine with it and he's happy with it. So uh, good on him. For him, I give a 10 out of 10 as a supporting character. I know we can't bring him for uh, companions uh, like in our squad for combat and everything, but I really liked him. And also on top of that, the reason I gave him more points was because of what he did to Udina, you know, uh, uh, overriding the console and then BOM! <laughs> that was an amazing one. All right, next. We're going to move on to Admiral uh, Hackett. Admiral Hackett so far, I, I love him. Because not only because his voice, the same character who... I mean, same voice actor who played uh, General Shepard in Modern Warfare 2, the OG one, and also who played uh, the Jedi Master who played as the Archives Keeper in the uh, Galactic, I mean, the Galactic Timelines for the Old Republic videos, because his voice is amazing when it comes to narration. I really love it. Admiral Hackett is kind of like a David Anderson, but as to... Uh, I mean, I think we spend more time with David Anderson, uh, kind of like more of a companion and as a best friend where Admiral Hackett is just a superior officer. So there's not really much, um, you know, uh, hang, I don't want to say hang out, like very close, uh, like close bond or anything like that, because, you know, the ranks are very different, including the time and service. But he is very supportive and he says, just keep me reports daily and all that. So that's why. So I give him a nine out of 10, mostly because we don't see him as much as uh, Anderson. Next, Garrus v uh, Vicarian. Our very favorite Tyrion. The first time we ever met him was in Mass Effect 1. I still remember that. And, uh, well, I mean, he's been with us ever since. It, I used him at least um, twice in uh, Mass Effect 3 so far, and he's been amazing. I mean, you can see the battle scars from what happened in Mass Effect 2. And you can see the character development. How he went from CSEC. And uh, he, I guess he was a great officer. But the thing is, he wants to get things done, but he thinks there's too many policies too many rules too many boundaries that keeps on preventing him from doing his job so that's why he went to omega in mass effect 2 became the archangel and pretty much did the same thing he did as he did back on the citadel but just in different ways and different rules cleaning up the streets but there's no red tape no boundaries no policies getting in his way and i say uh, that's what i really like and he's been our best buddy ever since so i give him a 10 out of 10 no explanation needed you guys know uh, number six, or not Rex. What can I say about Rex? No, in the beginning, he was pretty much, oh, I think they said that he was a bounty owner or like a mercenary contract. And he was a big support so far. But the thing is, when we first met him, he was very cold to, uh, towards us. He doesn't like humans. He did not like anyone else besides just getting a job done. So when he was on our ship, it was really hard to communicate with him. Uh, but the thing is, uh, things really turn... What was that player's name? Vermeer? Oh yeah, Vermeer. Uh, Saren's uh, stronghold. Things really went sideways there with him because we try to wipe out Krogans, but we keep on trying to tell him that they're not exactly the Krogans that you think. And there was an option where we could have killed them. And if we killed them there, then we wouldn't have seen him throughout the rest of the trilogy. But I'm really happy we didn't. And it looks like he respects strength at first. And then over time, we built up a friendship and loyalty. So I really like that. And he became a clan leader in Mass Effect 2. We ran into him during one of the loyalty missions for one of the characters. If you guys didn't see Mass Effect 2, I'm not going to spoil it. So you guys are going to have to uh, take a look at it. But I really liked his character development. Going from a mercenary to the member of the Normandy to um, a clan leader. But what I just feel sad about is in Mass Effect 2, we couldn't even use him at all. So that's why. For him, I give a 9 out of 10. 9 out of 10 is because he's an amazing character, but we just couldn't spend more time with him in Mass Effect 2. That's the only thing. Same thing, you know, like with Ashley Williams, because we can't even use her at all in Mass Effect 2. Next, Liara. Liara, I still remember. We met her when uh, she was trapped in some sort of like um, biotic prison. And she was an archae she's an archaeologist. She's pretty much more of a doctor and a researcher, you know, that like scientist that we always need on the team. She's that. And we did use her on several missions and she is very powerful when it comes to biotics. Like her biotic strength is like off the charts. But I didn't really use her that much, so I'm just going to give her a 8 out of 10 when it comes to combat. 
I don't know. Um, she's really good as a support character, but when it comes to like companions, I always want some uh, like a heavy gunner. So kind of like you know Ashley Williams or or not Rex or Garrus, and on the other one, kind of like a supporter. Um, Le that's where Liara tends to f uh, fill in, or maybe I'll just have like you know a squad of like uh, heavy uh, heavy hitters, like you know uh, people that rely on combat and machine guns rather than biotics. That's just who I am. I prefer rifles over biotics, even though I did a lot of biotics in Mass Effect 2. <laughs> but I have a preference, so that's why I'm going to give Liara 8 out of 10. Next, one moment. Okay, next. Tali Zora vs Normandy. <sighs> Tali, the first time I ever saw Tali, um... It was kind of the same thing with Liara. I was thinking like, oh, okay, so like another support, another researcher, and she's very good with tech. I didn't really go uh, like grow a close bond with Tali, like nothing like a romance or anything. I really just saw her as another team member. So it's hard to say, but I really liked her loyalty mission. And so far she's just really nice and really genuine. And I like her in general. So I would give her the same thing as Liara. Eight out of 10, nothing by it. It's just... And maybe if I grew closer to her, maybe the number will be higher. But I can't give everyone 10 out of 10s. <laughs> Man, excuse me. Now, we're going to move on to Mass Effect 2 characters. We're going to start off with uh, Jacob. And now here's the thing when it comes to uh, Jacob Taylor. He was basically the first person that we met. Well, besides Miranda. First person we met when it comes to combat. He has biotic powers. He's great. And... Even though he was an Alliance member and he left uh, the Alliance and became a, a contractor with Cerberus, he still acts like an Alliance member. Like, you know, mil he has that military discipline and bearing and all that. So he's a really great uh, addition to the team, even though I didn't really use him as much. But he's really great to talk to and he's very supportive. So that's what I really like about him. Next, I don't know why I put him here, but he should have been where Hack and David Anderson is. Udina. Now... Udina kind of um, turned a little bit more disdain towards me uh, ever since the end of Mass Effect 1 because, <coughs> excuse me, I still have a little bit of cold, guys, so please bear with me. We chose Anderson over Udina when it came to who would be the human counselor, but it really didn't matter because when I started Mass Effect 3, Udina became the counselor anyways, so... Mm. Now, here's the, th uh, here's the thing about Udina. He's not very, very supportive. He it looks like he's just one of those guys that just pretty much um, does his own thing to uh, get what he wants. So, uh, you know, just like any typical politician. So as for an ally, it's really hard to say because I don't really see how he really supported me. He just uh, talked to me and act like he's superior. So for him, I will give a 6 out of 10. The reason for that is because there was no support and the only good time I liked was when David Anderson clocked him. <laughs> That's the only time, but who knows, maybe in Mass Effect 3 down the road, Udina will become a great ally. Who knows? Now, for number 11, we have Miranda Lawson. Now, I'm not gonna lie, Miranda really caught my eye because uh, you guys saw in the very first episode, I was just watching and then I was like, Hello! <laughs> because... Guys, do you see what she's wearing? That thing is literally attached to the body. <laughs> so you can see every curve and everything. But either way, Miranda, um, I used her many times in the missions and she's very uh, good when it comes to tactics, biotic powers and everything. And I saw her as the romance option in Mass Effect 2, which in a way I kind of romanced. But so far, I haven't really gone much further because it's hard to do because we don't see her as much in Mass Effect 3 so far. I think I only saw her once or twice. But she's so focused on helping her sister that, you know. So for her, I would give a uh, 9 out of 10 because uh, the reason for that I deduct it is because we don't see her as much in Mass Effect 3 as in Mass Effect 2. And the 9 out of 10 is because, hey, you know, just visually. Mm. <laughs> so I really like her. All right, next. Grunt. Grunt was uh, basically like Rex Jr., in my opinion. Uh, but he is tank bred so p some Krogans kind of look down on that saying he's not pure he's not like any other Krogan so that's what kind of conflicts it but in the loyalty mission he really proved it and became uh, one of them so I'm really happy for him to watch that like character development and he's been a great addition to the team so I really like Grunt 
for him, I would give a 8 out of 10. Reason for that is because, um, just like, you know, several other characters like Liara, I did use him here and there, but however, I, I might increase his score when I um, know him more over time. So that's why. So I'm just saying the reason why I deduct it is because there's room to improve. Next, Jack. First time I saw Jack, um, she pretty much looked like the typical prison convict, you know, like tattoos all over and all that. But uh, what really made me grow on her was because of uh, her loyalty mission to see her origins. She wasn't like any other child. She was pretty much forced into it, grown up, tortured. And she, so she basically had no childhood. She was basically molded into a biotic weapon. But so far I met her in Mass Effect 3 and she had a huge character development and that is amazing to see. So for her, I would give a 9, a 9 out of 10 because of her story. Uh, her character development, she almost had a villain arc for a moment, but it's really great to see uh, how someone came from such a dark history to uh, make the most out of it and help others. So that's why I really like Jack. Next, Kasumi. Kasumi, um, I really like. I really liked her loyalty mission because you know the party, the sneaking around, and that's why I got the summer machine gun that really helped me with my progress. And to see how um, she was willing to do anything for her one of her loved ones, so that's why I really liked her. So I would give her an eight out of ten. And uh, I didn't notice until uh, the beginning. Well, not beginning. Uh, so far in Mass Effect Three, she had a thing for Jacob Taylor. And I was like, hmm, I didn't know that. But hey, now I know. So Kasumi, 8 out of 10. Legion, for our very first friendly geth. First time I met Legion, I, was saying, uh, I wasn't really surprised. I was like, there's bound to be a friendly geth. And he's kind of like a, um, how do you say? Uh, you know the movie like Chappie or uh, the drones in... Uh, Elysium or like Terminators it's kind of like that you know like the friendly uh, sentinel uh, I mean sent sentient robot that was uh, that's willing to help you out and aid you that's why I always think about Legion so for him I will give it 8 out of 10 because I really liked how they managed to sneak a geth into it and so far I had no problems with him next Thane Thane now I'm gonna tell you guys his score before I explain 9 out of 10 <laughs> what I really like Thane is his appearance his voice and also uh, his loyalty mission, everything about him. How he went from an assassin and his story was pretty sad. How he left his family to like keep on pursuing uh, what he's doing right now. And his loyalty mission was trying to reconcile and help his son not to make the same mistakes as him. So I really like that. So overall, I really like uh, Thane, but unfortunately he doesn't really have much time to live, unfortunately, according to him, because there's some sort of disease that I guess Drells have. So for him, 9 out of 10. Next. Zaid. Now, Zaid was really interesting because uh, he was just like a typical mercenary. So he was, you know, tough and um, just like, you know, willing to do anything to accomplish his mission. Doesn't care who he hurts, so that's why. Him, I would give a 9 out of 10 because I really used him a lot. He was really a great hired gun and um, he followed my orders. His loyalty mission was very interesting how he was the leader of the Blue Suns and how they turned on him and now how we got to where he is. But unfortunately, we lost him at the end of Mass Effect 2. But I wonder how things would have been if uh, he still survived in Mass Effect 3, you know? But him, I would give a 9 out of 10 because of how much I used him and so far I really liked him. But I deduct one because he didn't carry over to Mass Effect 3. Next, ED. ED so far, um, oh by the way, uh, I'm choosing Edie because um, I know she doesn't really have a form in Mass Effect 2, but so far in Mass Effect 3, she does have a form. So that's why I'm also including this, kind of like a special reason. But Edie, as the voice of our AI the, who helped us out in uh, many ways, and in the beginning of Mass Effect 3, she took over the body of some sort of robot, and now she has a form and can help us out uh, physically in combat missions. What I really like her is she is able to analyze everything so far and she's been a great help in Mass Effect 2. And for her, I would give a 8 out of 10. Hey, 8 out of 10. Next, Samara. Samara is the only one uh, who I failed the loyalty mission. I mean, it was really tough. I can't 
Uh, I was trying to raise up the daughter, but the thing is, I didn't do well because, you know, I didn't say, you know, drugs or music and all that. So unfortunately, I did not do well on the lo loyalty mission. And on top of that, um, Samara was unfortunately killed. So we lost Samara and it was really heartbreaking. And, uh, oh my God, I can't believe I didn't add this person. Okay, you know what? Uh, I'm going to say this guy afterwards. Oh my God, I can't believe I forgot this one. Um, but Samara, I would give a 7 out of 10 because I don't know her very well. I failed the loyalty mission and all I got is like, she's a very powerful um, Asari Justicar and she follows the code. Okay, next. Man, I almost uh, left this person out. I'm so sorry, guys. Morden. Now, a very fast talking uh, Salarian uh, scientist slash researcher. Um, I know he could have carried out into Mass Effect 3 if he wasn't killed in my gameplay for Mass Effect 2. But so far... I had no problems with him. He was great, but I didn't really take him on missions because, I don't know, um, when it came to like some sort of combat missions, I didn't really see the need to bring him. I'm not saying he's not my favorite. It's just sometimes I just didn't bring him at all. That's why. So Morden, I would give a 7 out of 10, just like Samara. He's the same uh, as Samara. I didn't spend as much time with him, but his loyalty mission was interesting in my opinion. All right, so now we're going to head into the antagonists. Let's start with Saren. The very first villain we ever ran into in Mass Effect. And he is the very first rogue specter. And he was the one that was brainwashed and controlled by the Reapers. But Saren in a way really did redeem himself at the end there. But his body was just like pretty much taken over and... Um, how do you want to say? Like def deformed into something else and attacked us. But Saren was a really great villain. I really liked him. Uh, his appearance as, uh, as a Turian like that and the specter really great so for him i would give a 9 out of 10 and the fact that he was able to redeem himself at the end that's why next the one who controlled Saren, sovereign our very first reaper contact and encounter as you saw sovereign really took out a huge chunk of the fleet at the battle of the citadel at the end of mass effect one <sighs> man dude he was he was powerful he was strong and i mean he's the very first reaper we ever encountered I mean, first time we ever talked to him was on Vermeer, but besides that, Sovereign was really interesting. One moment. <clears throat> Alright, next. Cerberus. Cerberus, the pro-humanity organization that is pretty much against all alien races. I mean, species, but will help humanity no matter what. No matter what the consequences are, any means necessary. Cerberus was very extreme, and but we did work with him for a while in Mass Effect 2. When I say for a while, I mean throughout the whole game. <laughs> when we ran to our old shipmates, they had very negative views upon Cerberus. Some of them did join, but I don't think they joined because they aligned with the ideas. I think they joined because... Um, because of us and also on, uh, also because of the fact that uh, it was a job. You know, Joker joined, uh, Dr. Chakwas. Oh, by the way, Dr. Chakwas was amazing. I would give her um, 8 out of 10 because of the dr uh, drunk encounter. <laughs> Including like uh, Garrus and... Um... Crap. <laughs> a few others here and there, but many turned away like Ashley and... Um... <sighs> Man, I don't remember off the top of my head. Sorry, guys. But that's why. So for Cerberus, Cerberus is really uh, powerful and really well funded. So I give them a 9 out of 10. They're pretty formidable as an ally, but pretty formidable as an enemy so far because we're fighting against them in Mass Effect 3. Next, the Elusive Man. First time I saw this guy, uh, the first thing that caught me was two things. His eyes and the cigarette. Because every time I saw him, he always had a cigarette. Or he was just sitting in a chair. Uh, but the Elusive Man... Um, Pretty ruthless, but however, uh, he had his own reasons. He'll literally do anything to protect humanity, like humanity first. Uh, he did hide information from us. He did make decisions that are pretty uh, like relentless and ruthless. But if you hear his reasoning, it does make sense in a, in a way. But uh, since I went down the Paragon route, uh, route, I always disagreed with it. But if I went the Renegade route, then I would probably be uh, like backing up the Lucid Man 100%. Who knows? Next time you guys see me, I'll go down that route. And so Lucid Man, I'll give a 9 out of 10. He was a really great villain. And so far, I encountered him like once or twice in Mass Effect 3. And I don't know. We'll see how it goes from there. Next, the Collectors. 
So they are um, protheans that were basically twisted and deformed into a new type of uh, like appearance and they fight for the reapers. They are pretty formidable, especially when it comes to the swarms, the weapons and everything they have. And their technology is very advanced. They even took out the very first Normandy and almost killed us. And uh, the collectors are very scary and the fact that they take people into hives and I seen what they do to the people, like turn them into paste and uh, using it to fuel a human reaper. But they are very formidable, very powerful, very fan uh, advanced. Just like Cerberus, I'll give them a 9 out of 10. Well, there you guys have it. So, oh, whoa, whoa. There you guys have it. So that was uh, all the characters. Well, not all the characters. The characters I want to address in Mass Effect 1 and 2, including some of the uh, villains. If there are some characters I did not address, I'm sorry about that. But however, these are the ones that I just wanted to like, um, I just made a list and if there are some that I missed, please put it down in the comments below. Maybe I'll just reply to it and give you guys my thoughts. But either way, this is all I have and so far every single character is great. Their character development, their journey, everything is really great. And I'm really excited to see what happens in Mass Effect 3. So keep an, uh, keep an eye out for a Mass Effect 3 uh, video guys. And actually when I post this video, it should be coming out starting tomorrow. So you're gonna see, guys are going to see like a different background and everything. You guys aren't going to see this until I think episode 8 or 9. So I've been, uh, so again, the day I'm doing this video is I'm already uh, like down the road through Mass Effect 3 for a while now. So uh, don't think I'm saying like, hey, I don't know anything about Mass Effect 3. I do know quite a bit because I did play already a few episodes and I'm still editing them. So anyways, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video and also hit that notification bell so you know when I drop Mass Effect 3 starting tomorrow and afterwards. And thank you so much for your support, guys. I really do appreciate it. So until then, I'll see you guys next time.